Welcome back. We continue with part two of my interview with Maria Elvira Salazar, the Republican candidate for Congress who is trying to unseat Democrat Donna Shalala. We shift our focus to the coronavirus. Recently, President Trump gave himself an A for his handling the virus. I asked Salazar if she agrees with that assessment. I know exactly what coronavirus is all about because my 85-year-old mother got the virus and she is very sick. So I know exactly where you're talking to me about. Um, I believe that um, that what happened that hindsight is 2020. That what happened to this country and to all over the world, elected officials just didn't have a manual that taught them what to do at the moment. I'm sure that some things should have been done differently. I'm not a scientist, um, but I believe that we should look at now. And right now we have a new opportunity. And uh, the vaccine, according to the elected officials, is around the corner. That is going to change the whole scenario. I think the kids are going to go back to school, hopefully, next month. And they have been kept safe all throughout um, this, the school year that started in August. Our seniors are in the nursing homes. So there are some positive things happening. But I believe that what we have to talk about, Jim, is starting from now on, and that is jobs. Because if you did not get sick like my mom did, and you did not die, now you don't want to get sick. Your pocket cannot get sick. And that's why I want to be a very important force in District Number 27 to help all those people that lost their job, that worked in restaurants, uh, people that need to make more hours or learn how to do something different because their store was closed down. That's where I come in. All right. So, so let's walk through this again because I, I want to I wanna get a better understanding. Okay. I don't have a job. All right. I walk into your congressional office. What are you going to do? I am going to ask you for your name and yeah. for your address <laughs> and probably your social security and your phone number. And I'm going to hook you up and connect you with hundreds of different programs that I'm going to have knowledge of because I'm going to be at the federal level that could help you. And then there are other programs that, that are specifically catered for small business. The federal government needs to spend $175 billion a year, 23% of what they spent on procurement on minorities, on women, on black and veterans. So I, I get, but again, I, I, I go back to, I walk in your office, yeah, yeah. you're going to hand me a list of programs that I can then go to, to try to get, find a job. So you're not actually going to no, find no, no, no. me I'm a not job. I'm going to hand you, no, no, I'm going to walk you through it. And I'm going to put, I, I don't know yet specifically how many of my staff will be dedicated to that endeavor, but I tell you that I'm going to allocate a lot of funds so I can help you, Jim Defeaty, that do not have a job. And let's say you were a bartender. Let's say you were a bartender. Now you want to learn how to be a mechanic, right? So I'm going to walk you through the whole process by the hand, and I'm going to, at the end, make sure that you will be able to be retrained and that you will wind up with the job Maybe not what you want, but you're going to have, a, now you're unemployed. So I'm going to make sure that you get a job by the end of the process. It could be, I don't know, three months, four months, but I will walk you, I will walk you by the hand. I want to go back to the coronavirus for a second. All right. You were, you've been a proponent of hydroxychloroquine. Is that correct? Well, you know, I'm not a scientist. I heard from uh, people that I work with very closely that from a doctor. My doctor told me that it was pretty good way back when at the beginning, March, April, May. But you, but you endorsed it. But you endorsed it. You have a TV program. You know, what your, your TV program is sponsored by Cano Health. Is that correct? Yeah, they, they are. Yes, they have. And uh, they, they're one of the main sponsors. And Dr. Uh, Marlowe, uh, Hernandez Cano came on the show and he was a strong advocate of that medicine. So I couldn't question it. I'm not a doctor. But you also directed people go to uh, Cano Health and this is where you can get your hydroxychloroquine. And I didn't say it just like that. I said, my mom belongs to Cano Health. <laughs> and Cano, the principal of Cano Health, a doctor, medical doctor, was saying that that uh, chloroquine was good at the time. So I don't want you to put 
words in my mouth. I don't know where you're going, but I'm not a scientist. I cannot tell you whether it's good or bad. Just like when the, the doctor tells you, hey, you have a sore throat, you gotta take antibiotics. So I go, okay, well, I'm gonna take antibiotics. Well, it's, but my point is, I guess I, I you know, earlier you accused Donna Shalala of, of profiting off of the coronavirus and the primary sponsor of your television show, which pays your salary, I'm assuming, is pushing hydroxychloroquine and you're pushing hydroxychloroquine you know does that not represent That's a conflict a you cannot compare you cannot compare the fact that congresswoman that donna shalala profited during one whole year by selling more than 500 stocks and making two million dollars net off her job as a congresswoman because she had privileged information and on top of that she didn't well, even what, follow wait a second, wait a second. you you said that you said that before what privileged what privileged information did she use to sell stocks for i mean i, I guess you're making a serious allegation so as a journalist you should understand what privileged information did she have that led her to sell specific stocks because there's no complaint about that okay and this is very simple. I'm going to tell you as a, as a former journalist, the Stock Act says very clearly that members of Congress have privileged information that they acquire by just sitting in Congress. For that reason, the Stock Act law or the Stock Law um, tells everybody that sits in Congress that they have to file every five, 45 days every single stock transaction if they have time to do that because they should be very busy working for the constituents every 45 days they need to report every single stock that they sold or they bought right and she Period. failed to do that which is an absolute violation and she's she's made up for it since but there's no but i have not seen anyone make a connection that says that she received a piece of information in congress sold specific stocks because she had insider information there's been no allegation of insider trading on donna shalala because the press is with donna shalala that's, that's why. why well do you, you have proof of insider trading, trading? listen if the law is telling you that you need to report every 45 days because you have privileged information and this applies to everybody that sits in congress if she didn't follow the law and it took her 365 days to report and she just did it because she got caught then what does that tell you that she went why didn't she well i'm going to tell you the excuses that she presented and you are a witness to this number one is that her attorney was a new into this he didn't know the law then second that there was a misunderstanding third is that oh her broker got the virus and he just couldn't file these were and you've reported on this so you can you can if it's if you don't if you don't want to see it and when you tell me and i think that you just told me something that is absolutely correct the news media local news media in miami did not report what she did that she broke the law oh, we, of course we did yeah we know yeah, we did yeah. just you but no one else did that's uh, that's first off that's not accurate and that either. is the reason why i'm here because you even though i know that you are not a republican and you do not necessarily like my position and i'm not a democrat and i have no position on your positions but let me ask you this donald trump recently it was uncovered by the press here locally that donald trump sought trademarks in cuba in 2008 for hotels casinos golf courses he held on to those trademarks well into his presidency does that concern you what i what um I, I pay attention to what the president has recently is not, it's not what he says, but what he does. And he has revived something called the Helms Burton law, which was asleep for 30 years and where Democrats and Republican presidents didn't dare to establish title three and title four. Trump did that. And he just announced that he was going to, um, cut the oxygen to, or, or, or uh, monies, or he was not going to allow the American companies to trade or to stay or to give money to 
uh, the repressive regime. So, so do you have I a reaction, think. though, to the action he took to seek trademarks in Cuba in 2008? Do, are you okay with the fact that he did that? I am not saying, I'm, I'm not privy of that information. All I'm thinking right now is as a president, what he did, what he has done when it comes to Cuba is exactly what my community wants to see. On Saturday, you were at a Students for Trump rally. They were all chanting for more years. You've expressed your support for Donald Trump. A two-part question. One, you know, the district you're running in voted overwhelmingly by 18 or 20 points for Hillary Clinton. Are you not out of step then with your district supporting Donald Trump? And can you identify specific areas where you disagree, where you think the president has been wrong in what he's done? Listen, I'd like that you left the best question for last. Trump is very unconventional. Trump sometimes uses words that I would not use, but he has implemented policies that have been very good for my community and for South Florida, specifically the economic. We had the eco economics or the economy, the way it was in January and February of this year, where more Hispanics were working. You've heard it before, where minorities were working. I like what he's done with Cuba, what he did with Venezuela, what he's done with Israel, what he did with China, what he's done. So, so some of his policies have been very good for my community. And he is not a socialist. And I sign or I align myself with freedom. That is my answer to you. And one thing that you're asking me that I do not agree with him, immigration. I believe that I just told you that we have 11 million brothers and sisters in this country that do not have paper. And 7.7 .7 million of them have been here for more than 15 years. They have American kids. They, have, they don't have a criminal record, and they have worked and paid taxes. Those people need to stay with some type of legality, because otherwise we would not be the nation that we are, the beacon of, of human rights in the whole world. Once again, you can see the full hour-long interview on our website at cbsmiami.com. We have invited Donna Shalala to come on the show next week to address the allegations leveled by Salazar, so you won't want to miss that. Also, both campaigns have agreed to debate each other on this show. We'll announce a date for that shortly. We'll be right back.